Hi everybody and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. This is a follow-up video to breadboarding the PIC 16F1508 and I'm going to live capture me writing the software to make the LED flash and then uh, if ne I'm going to download the software into the processor and if needed uh, do some uh, debugging of the software working so this is going to be I didn't prep for this in any way shape or form so this is just going to be me uh, looking through the data sheet and figuring out what needs to be done to get the processor to flash the LED so to start a new project I'm MP WebX I'm using a version 2.2 this is a little bit outdated but I haven't had the time or the desire to upgrade I think they're up to 3.05 so to start a new project, go ahead and hit the new project button. We already have microchip embedded selected and standalone project selected. Go ahead and hit next. There we go. Now we want to select our processor and it's easier just to type it in. This is a PIC 16 F1508. Like that and go ahead and hit next. Uh, we don't care about this section. Just go ahead and hit next. Uh, we're going to be using the Picket 3. Go ahead and select it from the list and hit Next. And we have a couple of different versions of XC8 to select from. I'm going to select the, the newest one. What's interesting about the uh, XC family of compilers is you can actually run multiple versions all on top of each other and they do not conflict with each other. So go ahead and hit Next. Our default director is already set up for MPLibX projects. And let's give it a name. Let's call this the PIC 16F1508. Blink. Because we're going to be blinking an LED. And go ahead and hit finish. And then a new project is created for us. So this project comes completely empty. So both the source files and the header files, there's nothing in there. So we want to create our first source file and let's do the configuration bits for the processor. Uh, if you're interested to learn more about configuration bits, I have a, a previous blog post about it that uh, you can go ahead and read. So to add a new file, you right click on source files, go to new, and we want to add a new C source file. Just like that. And we want to call the source file config, because this is where our configuration bits are going to go. So when the new file is created, it automatically opens for you. And now we want to go to window, pick memory view, and go down. Oops, and go down to configuration bits. Uh, MPLabX adds a very nice interface for you to create the configuration bit setting for the processor. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the configuration bits tab, and it'll bring it up full screen. So really, the most important thing in this whole tab is where your oscillator is coming from, because if you try to start the processor up without an oscillator. It just won't do anything. And this is selected right here, the oscillator selection bits. And what we're interested in is the uh, int OSC. And I have another blog post about this as well, of what the oscillator is, how to configure it, uh, what to look for in the data sheet. And we'll take a little bit, little look at that as well. So we want to select the internal oscillator. And uh, we want to disable the watchdog. Uh, MCLR VP Pippin function on MCLR, that's fine. Uh, the program memory code protection is disabled. Good. Brownout reset. Clock out is disabled. Internal and external switchover mode disabled. Fail safe clock monitor. Write protection off. Stack underflow. Okay, and I th it looks like this is about the only thing that we need to change. So to export this there's a button down here which is generate source code to output and go ahead and click on that and now if you look down here all of the settings that we just input got output to a very nice file a very I'm sorry very nice text so now we can go ahead and copy this like that minimize 
double click on the tab to minimize it now we can paste this into our config file paste just like that uh, please note that this include dot H XC or include dot include XC dot H there we go stumbling over my own words is automatically included with the file this xc.h header file has the descriptions for all of these configuration bits and also for all of the special function registers and everything else so this file needs to be included in every single c file that you do so now we want to add another c file new source file and this is going to be our main just like that and as I mentioned previously you want to go ahead and include the pound include uh, these menus make it nice and easy hit enter space and if you notice that xc.h was surrounded by brackets so you want to open a bracket and mplab will actually close the bracket for you now you can type xc and the files right here you can double click on it to select it just like that so now we want to include our main file, which is void main void like that and hit enter. Oops, enter. Go ahead and open a bracket, enter, enter, and MPLAB automatically closes the bracket for you. And now we want to do our main loop while one, enter, open a bracket, and it'll automatically close the bracket for you when you hit enter. So now this project is able to be compiled because you have to have this main section in there. So now we want to hit the clean and build main project. And down here in the outputs, it should build the project. And this is what you're looking for, build successful. That means the compiler had no issues with the project. So now let's take a look at the data sheet. As you saw this picture from uh, the previous video, we have it all hooked up. As I mentioned, the LED is hooked up to pin RA4. And we're going to use a timer to blink the LED. As I mentioned in my previous video of finite state machines, Delays are very, very bad. Do not use delays. And I'm going to try and discourage that right from the very beginning. So we're going to use a timer. But the very first thing when setting up the processor, we want to set up the clock. We already set up that it's going to be the internal oscillator. But now we have to figure out our speed. So we go to the table of contents and we go to the oscillator module. And this PDF links you right to it. And we want to look at this diagram. This diagram shows you that if we were using the external oscillator, it would come through these pins and over this way to the CPU. And if we're using the internal oscillator, which are these ones right here, it goes through this uh, prescaler. You have all of these options, and then that is plumbed into the rest of the processor. So now we want to scroll down to our registers. Oh, there we go, right here. So this is the OSCON register, the oscillator control register. And this register tells us some very different and important things. The first one is the default speed at which the processor starts up is 500 kilohertz. But we would like to set it for one megahertz. So to do that, we need to configure the uh, OSCON register and use the configuration bits IRCF. So let's go back to our project and it never hurts to do some notation and go ahead. Oscillator configuration. Like that, enter. So the register we're going to be, the register name that we're configuring gets typed in first. So OSCCON. 
and then to configure the bits of that register we type in bits dot and automatically a suggestion menu pops up and we're going to configure the ircf register space equals oops uh, space now let's go back to our data sheet and for one megahertz operation it is one zero one one is the binary number for that so it's zero b one zero one one semicolon and we want to say that this is one megahertz okay so now that we have the oscillator configured next I want to configure the pin so now we go ahead and note that pin configuration and I'm sorry if I'm misspelling things terribly I'm an awful speller let's go back to the data sheet and we want to scroll down and we want to look at this table right here so we're going to be using pin RA4 for that and the reason why I chose that pin specifically is because it has an ADC on it by default uh, PIC microchips have the ADC the analog portion of the pin enabled which makes the pin impossible to work with digitally so first we're going to set the pin direction and then we're going to turn off the analog functions on that so to read more about that you need to go to the IO ports section and in the IO ports section things like the tris the port and the lat are explained some very good reading there and ansel is also explained so to set our pin direction we're going to use the uh, tris register so we type in tris our pin is pin uh, is in the a bank so tris a bits dot and a menu pops up we're going to be using a tris a4 equals and the way microchip suggests is a zero looks like an o for output and a one looks like an i for input so we want to make this pin an output so this is going to be equals zero and then we want to go ahead and note that pin r a four output so as i mentioned before uh, this pin has the analog functionality that we need to turn off and this functionality is on by default and that is done using the n cell register and let's go ahead and scroll down to that port a lat a port b it's in here somewhere oh i'm actually i missed it because it's going to be with the a's we go. there we go and cell a so as you see here by default the uh, port is a analog pin and this is seen right here is this spot right there that one means that the pin is a one by default so we need to change it to a zero so this is the n cell a register so a n cell a bits dot n cell a4 equals zero semicolon and turn off analog like that so now we want to set up our timer and I'm sorry if this video is kind of dragging on but like I said I did not do any prep work for this so this is very impromptu this is how it would look from your point of view setting everything up we want to use I'd like to use timer one module. The reason I want to use the timer one module, actually, you know what? Mm. Yeah, why not? So let's use the timer one module. Timer. International synchronization. Yeah. 
And now we're scrolling, 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 scrolling. Oh. I want to look at the full map right there. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the timer one high, timer one low register of this processor. The reason why I'm looking at it is uh, these numbers are going to need to be assembled into a 16-bit number. They don't get assembled for you. So this complicates things just a little bit but that's okay so let's take a peek at our settings this timer can be turned on and off this timer has a uh, prescale Uh, settings right here and the uh, timer one clock source is FOC over four so this is the one that we're going to use and let's see here TMRSCS that's this top one it's zero zero by default so it's already set to FOC over four zero zero prescaler one okay so Let's go ahead and set this guy up. So timer set up like that. Uh, generally when setting up a peripheral you want to set up all of the settings for that peripheral first. And then you want to uh, turn that peripheral on so as we saw before the by default the timer is set to FOSC divided by 4 and we have we need to change our prescale value to 8 and actually let me do this with Excel. Excel makes it really nice. So FOSC and it is one million. All right, one oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, just like that. So then this is gonna be FOSC over four. And you can use the formula function for that, divided by four, like that. And this is the prescaler. Pre we're going to use a prescaler of oops, 8, like that. And we're going to blink the light a particular period. So, And I'll show you how the period function, and let's do like a 1,000. And then finally, we want to do what, find out what our final time is, like that. So this equals open parenthesis 1 divided by open another parenthesis FOSC over 4 divided by the prescaler so what this calculation right here does is show us how much time goes by per single clock cycle and then we count those numbers of clock cycles by multiplying that with the period to get our time enter so this would be 32 milliseconds of time because our period is because our period is a thousand so if I do the calculation to to the 16th oops I need an equal sign like that that's 65 535 numbers that we can crank that up to so I want to crank that up to let's say 6,000 and what's awesome is the value here updates right away so now uh, 15,000 like that 
Let's make that 16,000, like that. And that's about half a second. And let's just leave it there, 16,000. That sounds good. Okay, so what do we do next? Next, we need to go ahead and set that up. So we need, uh, we used a prescaler of eight, so T1 con. Oops, con bits. And we're going to be modifying the T1 CKPS. So dot T1 CKPS like that. And that's going to be 1 1. So equals 0 B 1 1. Oops, semicolon. Prescaler one to eight like that. We want to now that that's set up. We want to go ahead and initialize our TMR one high, TMR one low registers. tmr1 high space equals zero semicolon tmr1 low space equals zero semicolon like that and let's compile it just in case i don't see why this shouldn't compile and it does i like it So now we want to flash our LED. So how do we do that? What we're going to do is we're going to use the time that's found in these TMR registers and flash our LED accordingly. So we type in if, go ahead and open another parenthesis. And another parenthesis. This is going to get a little confusing, I'm sorry. If TMR1 low bitwise ended with, go ahead and open another parenthesis, TMR1 one high. Bitwise shifted to the left eight spaces. Oops, I need a big H right there. Space is greater than. Go back to our Excel sheet. Oops, right there, 16,000. Like that. Enter, open parenthesis, enter, enter. We want to toggle our light, and that's done using the lat register, which is the output. You read from the port and write to the lat. Lat A bits dot, lat A4, like that. And this is where a neat trick comes in. This is a bitwise XOR. So that's a caret equals one the statement uh, toggles the pin because if the pin is set to a one it's on and you xor it with a one you get a zero if you xor a zero with a one you get a one and now we want to reset our registers like we did before copy paste like that source format gets everything aligned nicely Ooh, and now that I think about it we forgot to turn on our timer so t1 
t1 con bits dot tmr1 on space equals one semicolon turn on timer one just like that and now let's go ahead and build it Uh, it looks like it doesn't like the way I am generating this comparison, but uh, we'll see what happens if it toggles well. And like I said, if we need to, we can uh, debug the code. So now I'm going to jump over to the board and I'm going to... Oh, uh, one, one final quick thing that I want to show you while I'm using the screen capture is I want to... Go to run set project configuration customize. I want to turn on the power from the Picket 3. By default, the Picket 3 does not provide programming power to the processor. And the Picket can't source a whole lot of power. I think it's only about three, uh, sorry, 30 milliamps. But it's nice if you want to do just like a little project like that. So now from this drop down menu, you go to power and you want to tick the box. For that and hit apply and okay and uh, well, the other really nice things about MPLABX is whenever you do a clean build the project is saved automatically so now let's jump over download the code into the processor and see if it blinks so these are the diagnostics that I was talking about because I tried to upload the code and lo and behold, it didn't work. And I've been pulling my hair out for like 20 minutes now. And as somebody that I hold in very high regard once said that thou shalt check voltages. So that's what we're going to do. And I found something and it's... Uh, it's very easy to get caught in this. So here's, I have it hooked up to my uh, Picket 3. You can see the wire right there. And the power is turned on and it's set to 5 volts, which this processor only really needs, uh, I think it's like 2.3 to 5.5, so anywhere in there. So those two jumpers that I installed on either side here and here, if I measure across them uh, carefully, Oh, what's going on here? Ah, my pick kit turned off. Hold on, let me program that one more time. Ah, I'm getting caught in traps even with my own video. Let me, okay, so now that I measure across those, there we go. You can see on the meter, the voltage across them is 4.75 volts. That's going from jumper to jumper. But what fooled me for a little bit, if I measure on the actual processor, on the pins themselves, that's what's great about a dip package, I'm getting millivolts. So the processor is not actually getting any power. And if I convert my meter to continuity, because it's nice and easy to hear, whenever I touch the probes together it beeps if I measure the ground side from the pin to the jumper it beeps but if I measure the power side from the pin to the jumper there's nothing uh, the breadboard I'm kinda using is a little bit on the older side so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide the processor Oh, sorry, can't see that. I'm going to slide the processor from this location to this location because I think the pin for the power over here is just worn out. And that's why I'm not getting a good connection. And that's something to be very careful with breadboards because that happens fairly often. So here we go. We got the LED blinking for us. You can see it right there. It should blink about every half second, turn on and off. 
And unfortunately, I didn't want to bore you with the exact details of the entire video of how I diagnosed it, but some of the things I found wrong, and it's a, it, they're always your own stupid mistake, is first the I had the LED in backwards. Uh, LEDs have little flat spots on them to show you which direction they go. Also, the uh, pins are different lengths, and I just assumed that I was correct in my assumption, but nope, the LED was backwards. Also, and I'm sorry if I'm for not using good capture software for this. Let me make sure that focuses correctly. I think you can read that right there. Let me scroll down. So the problem I found with my code is that right here, when I'm assembling TMR high and TMR low, uh, TMR one high, TMR one low, into a complete number, because you're given the high portion and the low portion of a larger 16-bit number, and you have to assemble it. I was actually using an AND instead of a or which I finally found and corrected right there. So uh, this if statement was always coming back as false, so this would never execute. And there we have it. We've got our first project, the unblinking LED. Uh, as I've done with all of my other projects, I'm going to take this and uh, zip it up and uh, post it on my website which I will link down below. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the videos that I do, uh, please subscribe.